Welcome to the Fort Johnson podcast, where we bring you stories, insights, and conversations that matter to our community. I'm your host, and today we're focusing on a topic touching the lives of far too many individuals and families, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Each October, communities across the nation take this month to bring awareness, break the silence, and work toward the prevention of domestic violence. Here at Fort Johnson, we support those affected and educate our military families about the resources available for those in need. Today, we're going to be talking about the signs of domestic abuse, speaking up, and what we can do to help create a safer environment for our loved ones. We're joined by team members from Army Community Service and the Criminal Investigation Division, who will tell us more about the services they provide and how we can help victims of domestic violence. Let's get into this very important conversation. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching this program, I am Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and you're watching the Fort Johnson podcast. And with me today, we've got uh, Tamika Long. Uh, she is with DAVA, the Domestic of Violence Awareness. DAVA, what is, what is, what, what is DAVA? Uh, I, I say it all the time, but I just, I always mix up my, in, my initialisms. No, that's an acronym. An acronym. acronym, yeah, acronym. So, <laughs> welcome. <Thank> you. <laughs> Here, watch it. Here, we'll move this closer so we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Dava is a domestic abuse victims advocate specialist. Oh, advocate. That's what they. That's the word I was looking for. Is advocate. There you go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. And over on the other side, we've got uh, we've got Audra Souls, and she's an agent at uh, CID or the Criminal Investigation Division. Welcome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you know, you guys are allowed to talk, right? Yeah. Okay. Just just so you know. And welcoming back to our studio is uh, Christy Galbraith. Uh, and she works at the Family Advocacy Program. She's a coordinator over there. Uh -huh. I am, yeah. Nice to have you back. Thanks so much. <laughs> Not at the end of the cameras, but here we are. Well, yeah, and that's why that's why I want to do a uh, I want to do a close up too. No. You know, just get right, right, <laughs> close, right up on you. And now my face will be brighter the whole thing. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> So, uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month is uh, October, as as uh, I've mentioned before. Uh, do we have a theme this year? It we is. usually have a theme every year, but so the new theme is pause and what's inside matters. What's inside matters and pause. Yeah, pause. So, what are we going to pause for? Tamika, do you want to take this? <laughs> oh, Tamika, answer the <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> so, pause. We'll be pausing to um, encourage individuals to just take a minute to reflect and understand the importance of um, domestic violence. Nice. Okay. And uh, have, have, could you uh, give me an example of pausing uh, just to reflect? Or is that just like a moment of silence kind of thing? I would say so, like a moment of silence, pause if you were a victim or know someone who has been a victim just to um, reflect or, you know, you want to come and you're thinking about saying something just gives you a minute to reflect and pause and like okay let me go forward kind of like walking a mile in your shoes yes I yeah think it's good to think of it as like a de-escalation tactic too like pause before you do anything dumb think walk before you away. speak yeah mm -hmm. walk away do what you need to do take a breather 20 minutes come back to the conversation i know some mm -hmm. people who in their marriages are like hey if we have a disagreement we're going to separate for 30 minutes collect our thoughts before we step into anything that we're going to regret one day and i think that's a great idea yeah i mean one one little uh, one little mistake or or dis decision to not pause can affect the rest of your life Absolutely. in a way that you yeah. really don't want then you'll have to go see uh audra i don't i uh, as I, audra you're you're very nice but i don't want to come see you <laughs> Don't worry, I don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got we've got uh, all kinds of uh, interesting statistics and um, actions that are taken in classes. And my big my big thing for years now is um, trying to take the stigma away from training and education, and because you know, like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of. Uh, of, of regret uh, but 
education and um, the family advocacy program has has been near and dear to my heart for a couple of years now. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit, and we've got the we've got um, the family advocacy program, which offers all kinds of education and classes and help, and then we've got uh, the um, victim abuse advocates, mm -hmm. uh, which help with those that are currently in a situation that they don't deserve. And they nobody deserves to be in a situation like that. But that but that's where you come in and and that's where you help out. Yes, we offer the victim advocacy program offers um, support for soldiers and family members who are experiencing abuse. We um, let them know like what their options are, what resources we have, we provide, things like that. Um, we have, we can let them know um, about the restricted reporting, unrestricted reporting, um, which way they wanna um, take things. Now that's always mixed me up with the, uh, with the restricted and unrestricted. Um, I know the unrestricted is a full-on investigation and excuse me and uh you know people are involved and people are notified but why i mean the the restricted reporting is just it doesn't really go anywhere but why is there what is why would somebody want to do a restricted report i mean if it doesn't go anywhere what's the use of doing it mm -hmm. They still get services. They still get help. It may not be a full-blown investigation like some people are okay with. A restricted report, in my mind, is something that, you know, the victim's still seeking assistance. They're still getting what they want assistance-wise. And if they choose to unrestrict it at any point, they have that ability. But it really is more so for the victim. It lets the victim know that even though they're not willing to take the next step or may not be comfortable, may not even just willing, but they're not, you know, they're still afraid of what might happen and interaction with their spouse and things like that. And the spouse isn't fully removed from the home or they're not sure what their next steps are. They can absolutely do a restricted and still seek the counseling services. And, you know, at one point, if at one point they're willing to say, hey, I want to take this unrestricted absolutely so it's kind of like you have now now it, you have it on record and right. it and if it gets worse or if uh if it happens again it's yeah you can it's okay so it's it's kind of like saying uh, uh don't let this happen again and if it does then you are ready to go i also think too to <clears throat> add on to that is the catch program which it works the same as a restricted report but it allows like people to who have been sexually assaulted to talk about like who it was, what happened, and they can be anonymous in that. And then with this program, if they see that it's the same offender with multiple other people, then they can ask them, be like, hey, this person has committed sex assault against other people. Are you willing to come forward and make a report? And so the catch program, I think, is also something good to hit on as well. Especially if it's uh, if it's somebody that's it's more than one victim involved. Yeah, you know, it's serial like, offenders. That's yeah. really what we're aiming. Well, not we, but that's what when the catch was created. That's really where the basis was. So now it's now you've got more. In, it's like it wasn't going to go anywhere, but now it's like. Yeah. But now we've got okay. Yeah, it's, that makes a lot more sense. It makes it a lot more sense. Why didn't you make it that easy? <laughs> didn't make it that easy. It can be confusing. <laughs> Like, yes, because like you said, like, why would someone want to report restricted? You when know? nothing yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never understood that, but now I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what this podcast is all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I would assume that uh, these investigations, uh, when you have to, when you have to go through uh, and investigate these kinds of situations, these are some of the harder ones to, to deal with. Yeah, they can definitely be... Um harder to deal with. I think um, the biggest thing is, you know, we'll get victims who come forward and have said that they've been in a um, serious incident and we'll do the investigation and then they'll come back and recant. Oh, that's not, uh, that's not helpful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, ah. Uh. I mean, everyone has their reasons, and this is, it's like, I'm, I, I like to try to keep a, a, a lighthearted kind of feel about everything, but, you know, some subjects you just, 
it takes me by surprise. It it makes me retract a lot more. And and I think that's the thing about domestic violence is this. It's it's there not seems a fun be, subject. Not only that, but there seems to be a stereotype around it, and people need to realize that it, it can occur anytime, anywhere, any place, with anybody. It's not just I grew up in a rough home, and my you know my parents argued a lot, and you know my mom hit my dad, and my dad hit my mom. Like it doesn't even you don't have to come from you could come from a very stable home with a very stable childhood, both parents, no alcoholism, no drug abuse, and it's it could happen. You could have one argument, and in the flip of a switch you know, there's a physical assault that has occurred and you can't take that back. So I think domestic violence, people really need to open their eyes and just say, hey, it could happen to me too. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry that it happened, but in the reality, human behavior is human behavior and you're, it's never gonna be a precise study. Yeah, and uh, domestic violence isn't always violent. It won't start out, <clears throat> I should say, oftentimes like it won't start out violent. Um, it can start with emotional, verbal abuse, they can tear that person down, maybe um, not buy them a car so they can't go anywhere, keep them from friends and family. And I think it's important to talk about that because people who are victims of domestic violence may not realize that they're victims. Mm -hmm. They just may think that this is the situation that they're in and maybe if they, you know, do what they need to do, it'll get better. But unfortunately, it always leads to violence later down the, the road. Yeah, and then the, viol- the last thing you want to hear is uh, the violence has gone too far. But yeah. um, now what would be some of the, the signs to, I mean, if I've, if I've seen somebody that is really clumsy and walks into doors and, and all that stuff, I mean, I hear it all the time. She walked into a door or he walked, he, no, he, she, was, she was just getting crazy and, and, you know, she just scratched me a little bit. It was, it was just, we were playing around. It's like, how do you, how do you guys differentiate accidents and, and, and start linking the puzzle together to say this is this is actual uh, abuse. Oh well, like Audra, Audra um, stated, like <clears throat> uh, the abuse of signs can be like verbal, emotional, even financial. Um, so it could be without without any kind of vi- physical signs. Without physical signs, um, physical signs can be, of course, you know, um, see like bruises around the neck, um, face. Um, like the victim, the wife could, like if the husband and wife are together, um, the couples are together, the wife may be afraid to speak up or, you know, she's like anxious or like if the husband goes to make a movement, like she jumps, just there's like certain things you look out for, you know, we know, notice to pick up on. Um, and not just women, men can be victims too. So um, you also want to look out for that. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's even harder for for men to, to come out and admit. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a lot of uh, the ones that I've seen, you know, I've seen s- videos of stuff and it's, you got this really big, strong man who's being abused by his wife and it's like, well, what is he supposed to do? He can't protect himself because he even touches her. It's, he, she's gonna go through the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's obvious that, you know, y- you see the bruises, you see the, the scratches and, and all that. And then to top it all off, the stigma of machismo, and mm-hmm. and it's like, how, no, she's she's just getting out of, she just gets out of control. She gets riled up and stuff like that. Is there a way to to combat that kind of thing? I mean, there are. I've seen the laws. I watched cops, and um, I've seen where you know some states. I don't know if it's all states, but some states is if there's. Uh, a kind of if there's an abuse call and there's signs of abuse nobody has a choice on whether charges are getting pressed or not they are automatic Mm -hmm. it's like i don't want to press charges well yeah i know on fort johnson at least with mps if they're called out um typically what they do is a no contact order so what they like to do is remove the service member from the home given the fact that there are barracks rooms that they call cool down rooms. Mm -hmm. So that's a 72 hour separation. It is in the policy. So commanders and the MP should be standing hard with that. But um, it's a de-escalation tactic that the army created. So there are certain circumstances to where someone is removed. So there are rarities to where the service member is the one who stays if they're the 
you know, if alcohol is involved and the service member is the sober one and there are children in the home, they're going to leave the sober parent in the home. Um, remove the intoxicated person, whether it be they go to a friend's house, they go to a hotel room, things like that. There are definitely de-escalation tactics that the Army and broadband military has created to assist any type of victim. And that actually keeps people out of jail. And, right. and uh, it's so there's so it's not like we're out to get you. Right. Uh, it's more of it a, really we're, we're to, here to help. Yeah, separate them from each other, cool down, and ensure that it doesn't escalate into physical or worse. Yeah, that it's that worst part that yeah. that really gets me because you know I've no I know uh, that the stats are there to prove that you know uh, domestic violence is one of the most severe and uh, threatening kinds of um, abuse or violence that happens. It's it's also the most common. Mm -hmm. uh, you're more likely to be hurt by someone you know or love then you are a perfect stranger. So surround yourself by perfect strangers. But, but then again, <laughs> no, one's, no, one, no one's perfect, right? <laughs> I think also um, the important thing to hit on too is it's, it's up to the victims, you know? And that's why we, we need to talk about domestic violence and what it means and who is a victim of domestic violence. That way, hopefully, they can realize that they are a victim. And um, when we talk about the warning signs, we can also provide resources for them. And not everyone is going to feel comfortable or may feel like they have to go to the police for things. Um, but here on Fort Johnson, there's a whole lot of resources like SARC, FAP, MFLAC as well um, that offer support. Dava, Dava, FAP, well. yeah. See, I got, I, I got all of them in there. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, the chaplains. Too. Oh, and the chaplains. Yeah, chaplains are a good resource. Yeah, the chaplains people. are good guys, man. Yeah. How many? Or is it? Is it? Is it okay to talk about the statistics and how and how many people, uh, or how many calls and how many reports you're you're having to take? And is it that? How big of a problem is it, and or are we doing very well here in educating and prevention? And and um, I mean, I'm trying to figure out where we stand on average uh, throughout America. Uh, are we doing enough to? I I know we're never doing enough to do to get rid of it all, but have we got, done a good job at educating and preventing and um, and trying to keep it at the the least violent or the lowest least level. Yeah, lowest level. So <clears throat> in my experience here at Fort Johnson, um, unfortunately, our highest crime is still domestic violence. Um, as far as the statistics go, I don't have an exact number um, to give you, but it is a very high amount of um, crime that we'll receive. So we do we got to keep up with the uh, the education and the classes and, and mm -hmm. get rid of that stigma that that uh, ACS and family advocacy is is you go there when you're in trouble. No, you go there to stay out of trouble and to make sure that you don't get in trouble. And also, um, CID, they started a domestic violence initiative um, a few months back, and its goal was to try to um, raise awareness about the warning signs of domestic violence and offer resources um, that's here on post, off post. Um, so I started a once a month, um, it's called Coffee with a Cop. And so I'll do a community outreach once a month, go to uh, one of the community centers, try to get as many spouses as I can. Um, doesn't have to just be spouses, it can be anyone in the community, but to try to get as many people um, involved so that way I can talk about the warning signs and I also have um, resources there who will come as well. Like last month, we had um, one of the SHARP representatives and SAFME there to provide what they offer to victims. Nice. So uh, do you buy the coffee? I do, oh, yes. Go. Coffee and donuts are free. <laughs> oh, wow. Coffee and, and donuts. So the cops are bringing the donuts. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> there I, it is. It, it had Every to be time. said. It had to be said. <laughs> I mean, 
you can't have coffee without donuts. No, you can't. <laughs> oh, and those in those little uh, coffee dunkers, the little they're like. Never mind. <laughs> so, what kind of uh, uh, Christy? What kind of um, uh, activities are we going to be seeing, like uh, uh, help help wise and and so we've uh, got a awareness lot. So coming we've up? So we've got a lot lined up for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Starting off. Um, we're doing a month-long food drive, non-perishable food items. All donations will be given to the main post chapel to assist any sort of victim with domestic violence. They'll be able to go to the chapel, say, hey, I'm in a tight spot or I need some assistance, and this is what we're hoping to do. We've got a, about 19, 20 locations that you can drop off at. That's a lot. Yeah, all the way from the library, the hospital, the bowling alley, some gyms, every CYS facility, Corvius Community Centers and the Leasing Center. Um, we're really trying to get it out there the, to the best of our ability. We're also doing a month long um, light up for Johnson is what we're calling it. So you can come get a free purple light bulb. Corvius has agreed to allow it. Um, as long as you live in Corvius housing, you put it on your front porch. The whole Are month. they incandescent lights? I have no idea. They're uh, purple. I don't they're know. purple. Oh, yeah, okay. They're purple Ooh, light bulbs. <laughs> you, do you want to know what the coolest purple light is? What? A black light. Eh. You remember those? Yeah. yeah. yeah see? Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, purple. these are purple. <laughs> Um, and then on the 2nd of October, we've got the proclamation signing. Thanks, Jeff. No problem. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> we've got the proclamation signing on the 2nd of October. It's going to be at 915 um, over by Warrior Field. Uh, we hope for a great community turnout. The general and the garrison commander will be there with us as well. And then on the 11th of October, we've got a family fun Halloween event. Totally free. We'll have inflatables. Um, Candy. Slot. Tons of candy. You can't have a Halloween activity without candy. Well, we're also going to make slime, crafts, food, Ew. free food provided by the USO, which will be great. And we're making our indoor maze bigger and better this year. So if you came out last year and we did a quadrant of our ballroom, it's going to be half a ballroom this year. So we're really excited about that. Nice. Yeah. And then, and then eventually it'll grow so big that we'll have a full ballroom maze that was <laughs> that was one of our employees hopes and i said she was out of her mind and if she wanted to do it she could absolutely do it but was it you tamika it was not no, no it wasn't she doesn't she doesn't want the you don't want the full maze <laughs> i wasn't there last year so it'll be cool to see actually. it takes oh yeah they do they do some really good stuff over there yeah. it's a lot of fun i'm looking forward to yeah <laughs> but and, and you have to dress up too yeah costumes are definitely costumes encouraged are, especially for the kids yes i'm gonna um, be feeling <laughs> yeah, we'll be giving away lots of free goodies as well. And then on the 17th of October, October is your wear Nash, National Wear Purple Day. So purple it out, whether it be your socks, your shoes, your jeans, your shirt, your hat, your hair, however you want to do it. Why is it when I think of a uh, of purple, like purple hat and purple suit and purple, I think, I think, you know, you just go full on pimp. Just <laughs> get the big brim and the feather in the hat. I mean, maybe Pops will come and show up. <gasps> Pops, some has, awareness. Pops has yeah. a really I'm cool. Sure he does. Yes, he does. He has a really yeah. cool uh, purple suit. I've seen it. I see all the pictures of him. I've never yeah. met him, but I You've see never, him. He's a great guy. Mm -mm. He's yeah. a, he, he really is a great guy. He's been around forever. And Vietnam veteran, too. Oh, wow. Yep. There you go. Uh huh. You haven't met Pops either, have I you? I have not. No. Apparently, so, he's a Leesville legend. He, okay. he is, and he was in he was in a music video too. Oh, yeah, very well. It's true. So, how long have you been here? For eight years. Eight years. Yes. Sir. And now you're just and you're finally coming over to the dark side over at the the yeah. ACS. ACS is not a dark side. That's why I got that, Jeff. That's why we're here. Oh yeah, that's right. I was trying to yeah. stop, take the stigma away. That's right. Correct. I was over at BJAC Behavioral Health on the sixth floor. Oh, you went from the the hospital side to the ACS side. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, that's right. You go clinical. Clinical to prevention. To prevention. Yeah. Yes. I got to learn. I got I got to keep them straight. <laughs> got to keep them all straight. <laughs> There's a lot. So the uh, so we got the food drive coming up. When I was in uh, when I was in high school, we had a food drive, and it was uh, which which class could get the most or collect the most food. Mm -hmm. And that year, uh, our class we found a loophole in it and and that year our class uh won and we were known to have fed uh more people ramen than, <laughs> than ramen isn't bad <laughs> my son loves ramen oh i love I ramen love, yeah i love yeah. it man I, I could i actually i lived on ramen when i was in korea it was like ramen and dinty more beef stew for lunch every day <laughs> oh my gosh oh and it was great <laughs> oh and you make fun of other people for having a routine but it's not like i'm eating cucumbers <laughs> and sardines if you like it you like it <laughs> Tuna kits and crackers are it nowadays, tuna, I hear. Tuna kits and crackers. 
<laughs> so, so uh, do are we going to have any um, classes or anything special uh, classes or meetings or anything other than while well, we do we we got the coffee with cops. And, uh, so we'll be doing outreach at the PX starting the 23 September to really raise the awareness, especially for the proclamation signing in the light up Fort Johnson. So we'll be at the PX twice a day from the 23rd to the 27th and then again on the 30th. Um, come look for us. You can get free goodies and all your light bulbs. Take them to your friends. Take them home. Take them wherever you want to put them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just in time for Halloween. Yeah. You put purple light out on your front porch for, or be able to uh, wire up your jack-o'-lantern. Mm -hmm. However you want to yeah. use it, they're free. Come <laughs> and grab them. We have 500 free to the community. 500? Yep. So hurry up. Get it. <laughs> and they can all go over to ACS. At any time. Yeah, we'll have some right available in the lobby as well. And that's building 3920. 9, 920. 920. <laughs> I, I knew there was a 9 in there. Yeah. It's it's kind of, it's it's been a while since I've been over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... We've got so uh, what the uh, the Dava program. Um, what is your your main your main job as a, a Dava uh, specialist? Main job is providing support um, and offering services, um, educating spouses and soldiers about the services that we provide. And what's your what's your most popular class or most popular education benefit? The uh, other than uh, the mandatory you you there is mandatory training correct or is that uh more on a different side mandatory training for the for dogs, the soldiers and, for the and soldiers um i know every wednesday um terry she teaches um the so the annual training is the dynamics of family violence right now it's annual it's going to move to biannual because dod just bumped it up to a four-hour training Oh, wow. So biannually, all units, all service members uh, will be required to take the Dynamics of Family Violence training. It is an AR 608-18. So that's really where we try to. So every two years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Instead a lot of people of every get. Every year. Yeah. A lot of people get. Biannual. Yeah. yeah. They all. Twice they, a year or every other yeah. year. Yeah. That's like, no, they're semi-annual and yeah. biannual. No, nope, But for anybody who has in process to Fort Johnson in probably the last two and a half, three years, every Wednesday, Terry, our troop trainer, does do the dynamics of family violence. They do a junior session and then a senior session. As do you well. know what they learn in those classes? Uh, warning signs, um, how it affects other people in the household, especially children, pets, things like that, um, the types of abuse, whether it be financial, neglect, te technological is a new one that they're coming out with for us, um, you know, online harassment, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, people mm -hmm. people don't realize that that is, that's like yeah, the new big, big thing. Yeah. yeah, with um, uh, like uh, revenge porn. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's, I've, that's not only that, that but is hack, illegal. Hacking into your profiles, you know, creating fake book, face or fake Profiles, sending Facebook. yeah, <laughs> sending threatening threatening messages, things like that. You know, we see a lot of that. We're an online society nowadays. Everything's cyberbullying. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's crazy. So thankfully, the DoD has realized that and said, "Hey, this is an issue," and it does lead into do domestic violence, especially with stalking, whether it be physical or online. So it's a huge issue. Yeah. And and ACS or uh, FAP has the uh, assistance to help people move out of here like emergency relocation and and case things like by that case yeah, case by case option. so i mean there are all kinds of opportunities and help out there for those that are uh, yeah. looking for it mm -hmm. yeah. for those that need it yeah and we really fap i feel is you know all in we want to help you before it gets too bad we've actually uh the troop trainer created a class it's called how not how to avoid falling in love with a jerk so that class is specifically for single soldiers single family members, whether they be teenage age, you know, 17 or above, I would say it's to highlight the importance of, you know, catching those red flags prior to, you know, gaslighting is very real. I love you. Love bombing is even bigger. So to avoid things like that, come take our class and she'll train you on how to look for those things. Cause a lot of people don't understand what a red flag is. Mm -hmm. You know, my son's 15 and he's in a relationship and I hope that he's doing well because he's a boy and I'm not a, a male parent that he has to come clean on things. I, so. I, I kind of figured that one. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, how not or how to avoid falling in love with a jerk was really created here just so we could help at the forefront of it, not necessarily when you're already engaged in a relationship that you think might be unhealthy, but you're kind of questioning what it is. 
you know, some people grow up in homes where, you know, their parents fought verbally or physically and to them that's totally normal. So we're trying to prove or show to people, you know, what is and what what's right and what's not right. Yeah. So be sure to uh, check out ACS and go over there and, and ask about the programs. Uh, Building 920 is over on Bell Richard Avenue. Uh, they've got all kinds of programs, uh, FAP, DVAM, um, uh, the employee assistance uh, the clo- the army closet soldiers closet or, or relocation we had, readiness relocate they have the everything locker. over there yeah. yeah the lending locker that yeah. was the one i was looking for but anyway i appreciate you guys coming in and i hope um and quite honestly i hope you all have a very uneventful well at least uh, audra the, <laughs> a very uneventful october but uh, a very involved uh, in prevention kind of thing. And, uh, you know, just take a minute to, to pause and reflect and, yeah. mm-hmm. and all your other. And one last thing, the domestic violence hotline number is 337-531-6897. So if at any point you or someone you know is encountering domestic violence, go ahead and call that number. That's where you'll get to speak with Ms. Tamiko or one of our other victim advocates. Ask questions, decide on whether or not what you want to do is make a report. You've got that restricted, unrestricted availability and take it from there. But we're here to help 24-7. It is available 24-7, 365. Very nice. And also um, with CID, we have a submit a tip option where people can um, post anonymously if they don't feel comfortable saying who they are um, to report a crime. Nice. And uh, that was the, where where could they... So we have a um, website and also a QR code as well. Nice. So, but I I recognize that uh, you guys don't really um, like visitors over there. (laughs) 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 But anyways, yes. I thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for coming in and uh, speaking with us all today. It was nice to meet you, Tamika. Welcome, welcome to the uh, to the prevention side and. uh, uh, Audra, it the was bright nice. side, not the, the dark the bright side. side. Jeff. They've got cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and Audra, it was nice to meet you too. And, it was nice to and meet you Christy, too. it's always nice to see you. Thanks. I'm gonna come in, come on in any time that you are interested. And uh, just remember to take this time to uh, pause and uh, see what's inside because what's inside matters. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in and uh, be sure to tune in again and keep in tuning. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, the like button, notification, everything else, and uh, give us a call or uh, leave a message or a note on our uh, Facebook to say what you would like to see on our shows and to uh, let us know how we're doing. And I think this is a, a wonderful time to uh, reflect and don't forget to wear purple on the 17th yep. and uh, we'll be uh, listening and watching at you later. That was easy.